All right, let's take a look at a kind of an unusual situation where we buy a piece of equipment by issuing a note payable, but that note payable doesn't explicitly state an interest rate. So we have to artificially create an amortization schedule based on the appropriate interest rate. And since it doesn't break out an interest rate, it just gives us a total of payments, we're going to have to have a liability that represents the total of those payments. So in this example, on January 1st, 2013, the company acquires a new piece of equipment with a note payable that provides for 10 semi-annual payments of $6,679.59. The appropriate borrowing rate for us is 4% a year or 2% for every six months. So we have to figure out what the principal balance of this note really is. And there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, we could do it with Excel. We could use equals PV parentheses and then Excel guides us. They want to know what our rate is per period. And since it's 4% a year, that would be 2% for every six months. The number of periods involved, that's 10. And then it asks us what the payment is, and it's 6679.59. We just ask, ask Excel to solve for that, and it gives us basically $60,000. So the other way to do that is to use our financial calculator. If you have, for instance, the Texas Instruments financial calculator, the third row has the number of periods, the interest rate, the PV, which is what we're going to solve for, and the payment. So in this example, N would be 10, I would be 2, we'd be solving for the PV, the payment would be 6679.59. There's no future value in the sense that there's no balloon payment due at the end of this. Maybe it helps to think that discounting can be thought of as taking the interest out of a stream of payments. So if we take the interest out, what's left must be the principal. And so once you plug in these variables into the third row and hit uh, calculate or compute PV, you should get the $60,000 we got previously. Okay, so now that we know that $60,000 is the principal amount, that should be the basis in our new equipment. I mean, it would be like really cool if the note originally said a 4% note with a $60,000 principal balance with these semi-annual payments, but it doesn't. Instead, we're stuck with this other note. And that note simply tells us that we have these payments. We now know that it should be a $60,000 principal balance. So when we originally purchased the equipment with this note, we're going to debit equipment for $60,000 because we don't want the interest expense associated with the financing of this equipment to be part of the cost of that equipment. And then what would be kind of what we want to do is we want to have the credit to notes payable. It would be kind of cool if it were sixty thousand dollars, but we can't do that because the note on its face says ten payments of six thousand six hundred seventy nine dollars and fifty nine cents. So we have to put the note payable on our books for that total. If the note had been a principal balance of sixty thousand dollars and interest payable over time, we could have credited this account for $60,000. But because the odd structure of this transaction, we have to put all the, the total of all the payments on as a liability. And we make that journal entry balance with a discount on notes payable, which is actually the total interest we're going to pay over time. And what we're going to do is every time we make a payment on the note, every time we make one of these payments, we're going to debit notes payable for that amount and we're going to credit cash for that amount and we're also going to turn the appropriate amount of discount on notes payable into interest expense. Discount on notes payable has a debit balance, interest expense has a debit balance. Well what is the appropriate amount of interest? Well what we're going to do is we're going to create a little amortization schedule so that we can figure out how much the appropriate amount of interest is. So we know the principal balances would have been $60,000 if they'd done this note right. 
We know the payment is 6679.59. We know that from up here. Interest at 4% or 2% for half a year. And the difference is the principal. So this is, in effect, the effective interest rate method that we dread so much. Then we go to the second payment that will be made six months after that. The payment amount is still at 6679.59. The interest is 2% of the previous balance. And the principal is the difference between the total payment and the interest portion. And if we run this amortization schedule all the way out, we should see it amortized to almost zero. We're off by two cents at the end there. So now every time we make one of these semi-annual payments, we're going to debit notes payable for the amount of the payment because we've got to get rid of this liability over time. And we're going to turn part of this discount on notes payable into interest expense. So let's do the first payment on July 1st, not July 7th, July 1st of 2013. We're going to debit notes payable and credit cash. So that's the full amount of the payment. And what we're going to do is look at our amortization schedule and discover that interest expense should be 1200. And expenses are debits, expenses are debits, expenses are debits. So we debit interest expense and credit this discount on notes payable. The next payment that this notes payable and cash entry is going to be exactly the same, but the interest expense is going to be for $1,090.41 and then $978.62. And in fact, if you look at the total of this interest expense down here, what you should get is a number that is exactly equal to our discount on bonds, which is 6796 and in this case it's 6796 when we round up. So that's why I say that this discount on notes payable is kind of a placeholder account for our interest expense. All right, I hope that makes this really counterintuitive notion of a note payable with no interest stated a little bit easier to understand.